Neil Perfect with Pam and Amy. Well, mostly Amy. Hello. Today we are, oh, let's introduce ourselves, right? <laughs> <laughs> Who are we? We are the Dynamic Wellness Coaches for Health Conscious Peace. Yes. And today we are making tikka masala. Did I say that right? Tikka masala. Tikka masala. Yes. Carnitas and Thai meatballs. So we've got a really international thing going on. Super here. flavorful. A little bit overwhelming because there's lots of spices and ingredients, but hang in there. It's totally worth it. And I realize I need to do a little bit better planning with the maybe one recipe that's not quite so complicated. Yeah, Look at really my back porch and everything here is just stacked with all this stuff. So it's going to be right. fun though and fast. And hang in there with us. Yeah. All fast, right. Fun, fabulous. Cool. So welcome. Very excited to have you here. We're going to make some really flavorful foods and fun, and it's going to be fantastic and fast, I promise. Once we get these things put together, they actually cook really, really fast. So the first thing I have here is a beautiful shoulder roast, and I'm just patting it dry a bit so we can put on the marinade. And you want to leave, normally I like taking all the fat off because I'm like that, but in this one you want to leave the fat because we need some good fat that we will talk about how to eliminate the leftovers and the extras once it is cooked. So another thing is it's going to take, I cooked one last night just for test and it took a lot longer than even I thought it would. So I did a 90 minute session in the Instapot and then I did another 30 minute session in the Instapot and this morning I did another 10 minutes. You really want it to fall apart. So I'm going to show you what it should look like in the end and we'll go from there. But you know how the chicken just really tenderizes when you use the clippers on it? The pork needs to do the same thing, and it's actually a really tough piece of meat, so it takes a little bit longer, but you can always add the lid back on and go for it, and that's why it's good if you're doing this as a meal prep, because you're technically taking time to make it rather than having to have dinner made in 30 minutes, because this, this takes a couple hours in the Instant Pot, which although is better if you're also doing it in a slow cooker, you could put it on in the morning and it would be done in the evening. So I started to integrate putting recipe ideas and or cook times for either the Instant Pot or the slow cooker, because I know some of you don't have one or the other. So there you go. All right, I already put my spices together, which is cumin, some salt, pepper, and some oregano. And then I'm gonna add a couple, Ugh, my hands are dirty. <laughs> Right before we got on the show, our water stopped working. So behind the scenes, we had people scrambling, trying to figure out and make sure that I had water for this. So that would have been an adventure, but we're always up for an adventure and still going to make it fun. And the best thing you can do is laugh at yourself anyway. So we would have made it work. And also, I'm on a roll today, I was supposed to be in somebody else's kitchen, which would have been a lot of fun. And instead, she's actually sitting here in my kitchen because our plans to be gone fell through as well, which turned out to be a blessing after some other events going on today. So it is Monday, four o'clock, and already we are having a crazy week, and Pam is telling me to calm down. Take a breath. So I'm gonna take a deep breath, all right? Everybody with me? The kitchen is fun and fabulous and does not have to be hectic. gonna be okay. Welcome to Cooking with Pam and Amy. Well, mostly me, but I really couldn't do this without her. As you have all seen, the video will turn out sideways, without volume, with whatever, all kinds of stuff. So here's my paste rub for this lovely piece of meat. It's kind of slimy, but hey, putting your hands in stuff is makes it with love. So we don't need to get it in on the called this is the piece of fat that's on there and this is going to stay sticking up in the instant pot or your slow cooker because we kind of want those juices to melt and go down around the whole piece of meat so you can turn that over to be just the meat showing and it's time to get dirty you're like you're like doing a salt rub on this <laughs> and it does actually can get your hands a little bit uh what's that called the rub exfoliating. the exfoliating yes Oh great, we got dead skin on our pork. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 this is all about good skin. My hands are very clean, I promise. <sighs> they don't need exfoliated. Yeah, they don't need to be exfoliated. But you know, we're exfoliating this. We're just gonna make it so yummy. 
Oh my gosh, my kitchen last night smelled so good. It was awesome. It still smells good. All right, see? It's nice and rubbed in. Oops, which one are we doing it? We're going to do it in this one. It's a little bit of a pit. And I noticed this one has a bone. The one I did last night doesn't have a bone. So you might do a little longer. Make sure you get all of these yummy spices in there. Because yum. Did you put that the right direction? I did. No, I didn't. I was going to say the same thing. I did. No. <laughs> I, I must have people with me because clearly I'm thinking way too fast. All right, so we are turning it over. Fat cap up. I guess I should say follow the instructions on the recipe, not me, but no. Stick with me here. We'll get there. We're going to do that. And you know what? When you're cooking like this, you don't have to go work out because this is a really good arm workout. There we go. One more. Good stuff. So this will get really soft when it's cooking in the instant pot. And you're just going to pick out all this other stuff when it goes. So we put this on here. To, um, for this one, we do not have a jalapeno, but that's okay. We've got some good onion here. And you just want to make big chunks. The onion that we found was literally like this big. So I cut it in half. Good thing we have two onions that we needed for these things. And here we go. Put those in, decorate it, then you can take a picture and send it to me. All right. I think we're good to go. We're going to let it sit and ruminate in its juices for just a few minutes, and then I am going to get it started in the Instant Pot, and then in a moment, let me actually grab what it's supposed to look like in the end, because you won't be seeing this one again. So, can you see me over there? Nope. I'm up there. I'll be right back then.
maybe I want to make juice first. All right, I'm going to grab my recipe because then I know what I'm doing for real. And this is a little bit complicated, not always what I do, but it's fun to have some different flavors in your thing. And this is really yummy. So we're going to marinate it first. Oh, Missing all my stuff. Da, 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 da. Hey, hi, me. We're going to do cashew yogurt because it's so yummy. Okay. Now I'm doing a double because Pam needs some and we need some on our vacation. So we're going to do some double. This calls for one cup of yogurt, but instead I'm going to put in two, which is almost this whole container, so that's good. There we go. And I'm just going to mix it in here, and um, in my instructions it says to put it in a separate bowl and let it sit, which we're going to do, and then I'm just going to take off some of this, the topping or the extra, and then I'm going to cook it in here again. You could just throw the whole thing in and go for it, whatever works for you guys. Remember, this is learning how to put stuff together and enjoy what you're doing and not be too fussed with the processes, but because you can change it and it might be the best thing you've ever done. So let's try this. Garam masala I don't have. The lemon juice is right here. doubling it. it. What? And you're doubling it. I am doubling it. You're right. Um, so, did I double? Yeah, I did double the lemon juice. Great. So half a teaspoon. We'll just do a, a sprinkle. There we go. And let's get that stirred up. Okay, we've got some yummy stuff coming up. The next two weeks are actually going to be replays and good salad stuff that we've done before, so that'll be good for summer in this heat. What is this heat wave supposed to get over with? Do we know? I love it, but I know a lot of people are suffering, so <laughs> it will be good to just do salad stuff. All three of these dishes freeze really well. So if you find uh, that you've made them and then you're thinking this is warm, I don't know that I want to eat it on a hot day, don't be hesitant to throw it in the freezer. Of course, the carnitas can be eaten in salads as well and not heated up, so not too hot anyways. This. You could also do the Thai meatballs on a salad. You could do the tiny meatballs on a salad too. That's very true. Or I know Pam just found some chia seed and what wraps? Mm -hmm. Something that we could do as well. And then we were we were just talking about an alternative something else. But what were we talking about? So in the instant pot, you don't want you don't want the chicken pieces to be too small because they're going to shrink and they're going to kind of disintegrate a bit. So don't be afraid to uh, make them a little bit bigger. They're good. And then this can be served over regular rice or ca uh, cauliflower rice. 
or couscous. Is couscous? No, it's quinoa. Quinoa we want to eat, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Couscous is wheat. Couscous is wheat. All right. That goes. And then, you guys, coming up, because fall is the best time to do a little bit of detoxing, I am working on some recipes to do a food detox, and we're going to be uh, promoting that here pretty quick. Here, talking about how to do it. So first we gotta get those recipes lined up and so much stuff. It's a good thing we have summer long hours to have fun and with Pam and I sitting out in the sun, we just love to talk about more things that we can provide for you. <laughs> Sometimes your husband's like, enough business ladies. And we're like, but our business is so fun. We don't want to stop talking about it. So, my apologies, I have a lot of chicken here. <laughs> and I didn't get to it before we got on the line, so. Get to do a lot of chicken. They're huge. They big, are huge. Big chicken. Big, healthy, organic chickens. This is good. And you know, if you get a chicken that's free range from a local farm, it's best if you can cook it for long periods of time in the meat or in the Insta Pot. Because when a chicken can run around and is not caged, it actually, the muscle is a little bit tougher than the ones that you might be used to that's the not organic because they don't have the ability to run around. So you have to think about the cooking process a little differently um, and make sure that you're able to spend the time or cook it in the time that actually tenderizes it. So just a consideration. If you're switching from you know the regular store-bought chickens to something that's organic, it might be kind of surprising at first, but that's, what you're, that's why, is because when you Run around and get exercise and you build muscle. And our muscles get stronger. Which, so you're just eating a stronger chicken. <laughs> and hey, some of you might not mind all this gristle. I know some people don't like it. So you do need to be cautious though, don't just throw them into the pot because like on a lot of these I'll find the wishbone in them still, or pieces of it. So it's really good to, in some way, no matter what, kind of handle the meat and feel along here to make sure there's no bones in it. So. It's time to sharpen my knife. Hello. Ooh. If you guys saw, this last weekend, I've been experimenting with some more recipes, and I made poke, which I know some people don't do raw fish, so we'll have not, <laughs> you can skip that recipe if that's not your thing, but oh my goodness, if you do, there used to be a really great place to get it in Oregon City, and that has gone out of business, so we decided to make it ourselves, and it was a lot easier than I thought. You know, because when you don't make something, you kind of look at it and you think, oh, that must be complicated because it's so amazing. But just have to get over that and try. And uh, it was quite simple. So the trick will be to find a good tuna. That's part of the trick. And I know right now that um, we're trying to use up all the meats in the freezer that we've collected over the year or in the past six months. So if any of you have extra meat cuts or things like that that you'd like me to, to suggest a recipe for, and maybe even do it here on the show, I would love to do that. Just drop us a, a comment under here and say, help please, <laughs> or a recipe needed. That's a good one. Hashtag recipe needed, and we will figure something out for you. Also, if they're interested in the cleanse, just do on this oh, yeah. video, just say interested in cleanse. We're Hashtag keeping cleanse. track of those. Yeah. We will be doing that. But that's what we And if there's a subject, I know you guys will see that uh, tomorrow our new vlog comes out for the week. If 
the new subject, and we would love to help anybody who's interested in a particular health subject. We can get that information to you as well. One more to go, guys. Look at that. And then he's taking mm -hmm. <laughs> 20 minutes just to do the chicken. Not that's that okay. long. You did the pork Not, first. That's though. true. We just got fresh peas and fresh green beans. So I was really excited when there was green beans because I had put those on the shopping list this week. And then we were able to use them. So that will be yummy. So also, when I put just a side of veggie, grab whatever you can find at the farmer's market and steam that up because the ammo is good stuff. Why do you squeeze the water out of zucchini? Um, we squeeze the water out because that would make the meatballs stick together better. Because if we didn't, if we left all the water, they would uh, become very. They wouldn't. They wouldn't be able to solidify. So we want zucchini in there. We don't want the water. Like last week, we made um, zucchini enchiladas with. So the wrapper instead of tortilla was thin sliced zucchini. And it was lovely to work with that really big zucchini that I had, but we found ours became very watery. Like Pam took off maybe three cups of water out of the pan after it was cooked. Hi. So I think because there were so many seeds in it, it just was too watery. There we go. See how far it is? It's quite dry. If you wanted to, you could even just put a paper towel around it, do that. I thought about putting salt on it because that actually helps leach out the water more. But the reason I decided against that is because when you do that, it makes them kind of crunchy. That's how we get our zucchini noodles. And I didn't want the zucchini in this to be crunchy. I want it to be soft. So I'm gonna mix this all in. There will be less liquid also because we don't have the red onion in here. That's of our onions have been recalled. Yeah. I don't know if it's just a Fred Meyer thing um, or a Safeway and the other stores. Has anybody had seen that recall sign? The Walla Walla Sweets, that's the huge onion that we got. There was those. 
So even when I was there a few hours before Pam, or the day before Pam, there wasn't any Walla Wallas there, so that was good. Ooh, that smells good. Remember, when you're making meatballs, you want them to smell yummy. So I'm going to let that sit for a minute while I get together the ingredients to make the curry uh, gravy that's going to go on it, or sauce. All right. start the chicken? Um, no, I don't. I want that to marinate a little bit. Just a little bit. And let's see. I'm just going to use this as a So, we got our can of coconut cream. And our, oh, keep looking at the wrong thing, three tablespoons of teaspoons of curry are done. There's one. I'm a little generous with my scoops. Can you guys see what I'm doing? There we go. And a half. Oh, we got the curry. There we go. One and a half of that. And two tablespoons of fresh ginger, which I'm not going to put as much in because my good friend doesn't like it as much ginger, and some zest of lime, which, let's see, which one do I want? I think I want this one. No. This is confusing. Back. Never in the drawer that I look in first. Very back in the top. Is it? Let your 
soak in the juices. There we go. And we're going to make the next sauce for the tikka after we start our meatballs. So, in their instructions, it talks about making sure they're not overcrowded because then it's hard to turn. And they're going to be softer than uh, beef meatballs because they are uh, the turkey, which is super soft. So, let's get this going. And I think the one thing I need are my pinchers, which I cleaned around my, in my kitchen. Do you want my meatball things? maker? Huh? Do you want my meatball maker? Let me see your meatball. The, the scoopy thing? Yeah. Does it work pretty good? Yeah. In the turkey? Let's try it. We're going to try the meatball maker. Freya's having a party right now. Freya's having a party? All right. Freya, is she on? Is she here? I don't know. Freya, put your link in there. Freya, put your link in there. Everybody needs one of these for their meatballs. I'm loving it. That's so easy. Easy peasy. This is a big one. Oh my gosh. Clean hands? <laughs> meatballs is like the dirtiest ham thing ever. I guess I did fix them already. That is meatloaf. When I was little, I hated touching meat. Oh, I hated it so much. And my mother would make fun of me. And then I moved away, and uh, she came to visit me in Italy. And I just pulled out this chicken breast, and I was doing this stuff to it, and she was shocked. Look, see, there's a big piece of zucchini we're going to take out so we don't make anybody nervous. Now I know what the green flex is. Now you know what the green flags are. See, I've ruined her. Usually she doesn't see me cooking. All right. Even my children now, they laugh at me because they're like, if something can be found in a healthy version, my mother will do it. It's a great accomplishment, in my opinion. Because you might as well, if you like something and you can eat it in a healthy version, even better. And a little bit less. We don't want to have guilt when we eat. That actually stops our digestion. All right, we're starting to sizzle. This is good. And we're sticking a little bit. So let's spread our oil. Part of that, the sticking, is actually adding it to the pan too soon. Because it had a moment to sit there and stick to the pan before it was hot. If you put it in when it's hot, it cooks it immediately, and it doesn't stick. So. I'm going to put these in, and I'm going to put them kind of close, because then I have a trick for how to turn them without 
batches of these, um, depending if how big your pan is. Of course, I have this big cauldron here, so it works very well. It fits a lot more stuff. And then I get super spoiled when I have to use a little pan. See, the trick is that the big pan doesn't let all the mess out. So that's really my secret. I use a big pan because then it's not as messy. In the little pans, I'm always slopping stuff on the sides because I'm not used to that. So. I am so excited about this lemon bowl. Meatloaf makes me want meatloaf. Ah, ha, we're gonna start. Yeah, it's funny how quickly we get. We wanted salads, and then everybody liked salads, and salads are great. And now I'm getting sick of salads. But it's so warm out. Oh, big piece. That uh, we gotta be still eating, and not cooking in the kitchen. The cool thing about meal prepping this stuff is that. Heat your kitchen up one day, and then don't do it again. And if you're cooking with the Instant Pots, which we're doing two of our menus on that, um, you would be having less heat exposed also. I think the slow cooker emanates a bit of heat, so be careful with that. I'm getting almost... We might just have to hold up the pan in a second. Show up. my new favorite toy. <laughs> all right, ta -da! Meatballs. And all I have dirty is my fingertips, because normally if my hands are coated in enough to probably make a whole meatball at the time I'm done. So, that is awesome. And they work for turkey. I tried to make turkey burgers in those, you know, the, the meat form thing for tur for hamburgers. Don't do that. Don't try this at home. <laughs> Should have been the, the, the warning because it was a mess. The meat is just so nice and sticky. All right, they're kind of sticking a little bit. Oh, thought I had enough oil. Smells good. Let it go a minute. It means it's not quite done yet. Or you burned it com completely. No. <laughs> but let's see what, what the verdict is on this one. I like to use this because what I do is I pick the meatball up and I actually set it, the cooked part, down onto a raw top of the raw one, and then I kind of roll it forward and it plops down and back into its spot on it on an uncooked part of the meatball, and so that's how I turn them over. You want me to show them? Yeah, can you, can you bring it over here? It just kind of works cool. So I pick this up like that, can you see? Yep. And watch. Oop. See? Get it to plop down. And that way too, because when they're first cooking, they're so fragile. And these ones are sticky a little bit. I'm not actually letting them cook, I'm rushing. So, let's wait a minute. Patience and slowing down. Another thing you can do is you can bake them in the oven. And I'm pretty sure I put instructions for that in there as well. So, if not, if somebody would like that, then let me know and we can do it that for sure. Because it kind of works. Let's see if I need these fun stuff. Well, I'm just going to massively go through them. turn it to its side that way. You don't have to worry about it. Oh, see how soft? Oh, they're so soft. Turn it that way. Again, they're not 
not letting them brown very well. That one sticks. There we go. All right, that's all I'm going to do for now. Those are the first ones I put in. But you get the idea. Pick it up really gentle, set it against the other one, and use, let that pull around. Sid, you're trying to turn them over, and they just squish in your pinchers sometimes, or your fork, or whatever. So that's the trick that I discovered on that. So we have our sauce. Let's look at what we're going to do for the tikka masala. And we will get that started. Here it is. Stir it. Yeah, see? It's really good. It's not overly uh, juicy. So I'm just going to get this going. I believe, let's take a peek. In the meatballs, masala. Okay. It's making me hungry. That's a mix sauce. So we're gonna put the sauce together without the coconut cream in it. Another can of coconut cream. How do? Oh, oh. We're not using coconut cream. We're gonna use the cashew. So we're gonna put. We're gonna save that for later because you add that at the end after it's cooked. Um, and we're not, I'll do the cauliflower rice in just a moment. And we're going to, also, this Instant Pot does not have a saute function. So I'm going to skip that. If you have the Instant Pot brand, it has a saute function. You could saute in a pan, kind of brown it a little bit. But I have found actually that it, it does just fine without that. But I know it's a preference. Some people like to have it kind of seared, and some people don't. So go with that preference and go from there. Um, we're going to get it into the Instant Pot and just cook it for two minutes. All right. And since we're not sautéing it, let's see what I'm going to do. Here, on the fly, changing things around. The We need tomato sauce, which is here. I ran out of bowls today. Oops. There, see? I jinxed myself because I made a mess now, and I said earlier I hadn't made a mess yet. The thing about having a big pan is sometimes the stuff on the outside isn't getting cooked as well. So I'm going to move some of these ones that are getting cooked to the outside. If they were to bake them, would it be 350 for how long? Uh, probably 20 minutes would be my guess. You want to see them getting brown. And turkey is going to cook really fast, much faster than beef. So. I would, a good bet would be 20 minutes to start, and then uh, see how brown they are. And 
You know, when you, when you, it's just like the chicken breasts. When you test it with some pinchers, you can tell if it's still squishy or if it's hard and cooked. So think about texture and how soft this turkey meat is, that if you squish on it a little bit and it still seems soft, then it's not done. And they can get, in the oven is even more forgiving. They can get nice and browned. And or if you let them get um, browned a little bit and they're not quite done, it's okay because then you would put them in a skillet and you put the sauce over it and you're gonna simmer the sauce for a while. So they will finish cooking all the way into the inside. So, does that make sense? All right. Uh, uh, uh. I don't remember what I need another onion for, but I know it's on the list. And, oh, I know. It was to chop up with cilantro to go as a garnish to the, um, the pork, the, the carnitas. There we go. Okay, so that's for carnitas. The cilantro is for carnitas. Easy peasy. That is, if you go into the restaurant, uh, into a restaurant and you order carnitas, they always usually garnish it with a little bit of onion and cilantro. So that's that, that's where I got that. And you can even do a squeeze of lime on it. Super yummy. Okay. So that's good. And that's why there was two limes, I think, on the, on the shopping list as well. Whew. I think I really messed myself up by having way too many ingredients this time. But thanks for sticking with me, guys. We're getting in there a little later than usual. But that's okay. Now we're going to do the sauce for this. And I keep saying I need a bowl and not getting a bowl. So, oh, I know what bowl I want. One of these super pretty ones like this. I'm gonna put this back over here. We can stick it in here. That's gonna go. We need our tomato sauce. It's up only. Okay. Ten minutes is the stew. Canning thirty. No. Cancel. Just totally. Chicken meat. So there it is. Always okay. That's good. Five minutes. That's gonna heat it all up. If you don't find the right button for what is listed or labeled for the whatever you're cooking. The only difference between all of those buttons is the cook time. They put in a kind of pre-registered suggested cook time and that might be what you need or not. So if the bean one doesn't match and you don't have a way to adjust the time, then just push all the buttons and figure out which time slot you need. That helps. Um, so I just found on here that the bean and lentil Bean and lentil setting is only five minutes, so that's what we're going to use while we make this. And go from there. We've got our tomato paste, and we've got our garlic. Oh, this is gonna be so good. So this is for the tikka masala, and I am going to double it, kind of. Do you have any tomato sauce? Soft sauce? Actually, I'm gonna Let's use yeah. all the rest of the paste since we have water. it.
and whiskers and garlic. This is five cloves. We did have some here, but I'm just going to use my already ground up stuff. And we all like garlic, so we might put a lot of them. It says five cloves, so if I double it, it would be ten. There we go. Then we need the garam masala, and we need half a teaspoon of paprika, but half would mean one whole one. So here's our paprika, which clearly I need to get some more of. Um, the paprika is super yummy, and we want you to do the smoked paprika. I don't think this one is smoked. Or all paprika smoked. I'm not very experienced in paprika. My best friend Jill and my son Owen are the ones that are like, you gotta try it, you gotta try it. <laughs> so one time I made eggs, which I know you eat, and I didn't put paprika on it. It didn't go over well. <laughs> egg lovers are like, what? What are you doing? Deviled eggs. Deviled eggs, yes. Deviled eggs without so paprika. How is that happening? So, mix this off. I need a teaspoon of turmeric. Oh, that sounds so amazing. And I need a quarter teaspoon of cayenne, which would mean one half. So we use this. try the cashew yogurt as the cream. Because sometimes the coconut, if you're not going to cook it down, doesn't actually get thick. So I think that the cashew is going to be a really great alternative. And we have that already set aside. This we're going to mix up. it up.
thing has gar uh, ginger in it, so I don't want to mess with it right now. Um, but there's that. We have a few minutes to wait for the tikka masala. And we didn't do anything in the oven this time. That's fun. We're always going to wait. See, now would be the time where we could go do some dishes, get cleaned up, prepared, to get this stuff going. Um, you can make some rice to go with it and or go from there. Does anybody have any requests for recipes? The next two weeks will be replays, but after that, we've got two weeks, the last two weeks of August, for new stuff. And I was looking at doing the poke. We have some new salad ideas, and also, in preparation for the cleanse, or the detox, we're gonna be doing some things like bone broth ideas. Oh, and water ideas. So, I would love to know what your favorite water enhancer is. Um, I love putting mint, so if you have mint, which grows like crazy, you can drop a few leaves of that into a cup or even to into a pitcher in the freezer refrigerator and it will infuse your water with cucumber, um, Berry, berries. raspberries, blueberries, and cucumber, and orange, and mandarins, and lemons, and limes. Like, get creative because right now, especially with this heat, and I find myself, I don't want to drink as much water for some reason. And I'm, I feel like my mouth is always dry. So creating ways for us to be having some good water and keeping us hydrated is super important right now with the heat that's coming on to us. So this is looking super yummy. That'll simmer a couple seconds. That'll go. Look at this, guys. You could do that over Thai noodles, too. You could do this over Thai noodles. That would be good. I think this is the one that I had said to add some green beans on the side too, right? Yeah. So, because the tikka masala goes over a uh, cauliflower, and um, so you got your good veggies in that way, and then this could be with a side of green beans, or it could go over some rice and or some cauliflower rice as well, and then uh, the carnitas, of course, you can put tomatoes and pico and all kinds of things with that that you're making. So, I think what we'll do is maybe take some pictures or add a second video. Where the videos, we added on prepping the final meal last week for two of the items that we made. Let me know if that was helpful and if we should keep doing that because um, it's something that we would like to show how to put everything together, um, but it's just not always feasible in here or you'd have to sit here and listen to me for the next hour. Go a little crazy. <laughs> We got a lot of likes on the spaghetti squash. The spaghetti squash one was super cool. And it's so much, it, when you take away the hard parts of cooking something, it just changes your world. And it makes it more um, understandable and easier in, in, to grasp. And so I love finding little tips and tricks like that. Um, and yeah, that one was a good one. But what else? Look at all the spices and stuff we had to take. Super yummy stuff. I know last week we had somebody ask for curry, so that's why I came up with the Thai meatballs. But also in the future we can be doing a coconut curry, which is super simple and so easy to meal prep because you're not even cooking the vegetables. You're just sauteing the chicken really fast, putting in your curry sauce and your coconut, and then you throw it all together cold and throw it in the refrigerator and you can reheat it really easy. It's one of the easiest uh, meal prep meals, and I haven't even done that one yet. So um, those are good things, but guys, just do the final instructions on the chicken, what you're going to do. The tikka masala. So I'm going to let that heat up in lieu of saute. This is what I'm doing, just getting it heat, heated up to a good cooking temperature. And then I'm going to add this sauce. And again, because I doubled it, I am going to pay attention to how much liquid is in there. You don't want it to be super dry because you want to kind of have it sauteing in juices, kind of like this does. So we're going to throw that in there. Um, and if you need to add a little bone broth, that's fine. You don't want too much liquid. It's not a soup, but go from there. Also, when you're using an Instapot, all the juices in the air in the moisture stays inside. So it's just something to kind of play with. I will definitely show uh, a video of what that looks like when we get it opened up. And then also you saw what the pork is supposed to look like. And when we do some of that preparing it, I will show you how we sizzle it in the pan and get it crispy on one side. 
very important. If you're doing it out of the fridge or the freezer, um, you want to heat one side, turn it over, okay, so it's kind of warm all through it, and then let that side sizzle hot, just one side of it, so that you have kind of like half moisture and half crunchy bits. That's how they do it in the restaurants, to keep it moist and yet have those yummy crunchy pieces. So you only want to brown one side, and then you can put it on all kinds of stuff. And I put a whole list on the recipe of the things that you can put in there. And I would love to know if you have an extra idea that I could add to it. So let me know about do that. Do you want to show them the wraps I found today? Oh yeah, take a look at these wraps. They look super yummy. How long do the Thai meatballs cook? The Thai meatballs should go probably, just looking at the sauce, probably another five or eight minutes. Basically at this point, you are only wanting to look at how thick you want the sauce. So you want it to be kind of like a gravy. You can see that it's already starting to stick to this really well. And it tastes really good. But quinoa and chia seeds. There we go. Quinoa and chia seeds. What is that it? What are the other ingredients? That's super cool. Oh, and I hear that it's a Sorghum rice, millet, tough, quinoa, amaranth, tapioca, cornstarch. Okay, that's the good thing that keeps it together. Awesome. Yeah, that would be good for your carnitas. Yeah. Ew, we could do meat, the Thai meatballs in there. Ooh, with some sprouts. I just found at Fred Meyer some really cool sprouts. So, not the big sprouts, but they were, one's a broccoli sprout, and they're the teeny tiny things. So, like what my mom used to make in a jar. Did your mom ever do that? So, it, they're the thins. They're not the microgreens. So, the microgreen is when it grows a little bit bigger and it's the first shoots. These sprouts are like the very first thing that comes out of the shell, and they had them in there, and they were amazing just to add to, we added it to our poke bowl, actually. So that was kind of fun. But any ways of adding a little bit of crunch and more vegetables into your diet, that's what we gotta do, keep working on that. Love you guys, thank you for watching, we'll see you soon.